my wife said, Rob, you're driving me crazy. <laughs> you need to get back involved with uh, you know, community radio rather than just trying to work seven days a week. We give them the music that they grew up on, to coin a phrase, the soundtrack of their life. There are a lot of lonely people out there and, you know, there's no skin off my nose to give them a nice word and um, a friendly smile because you can hear the smile in your voice, you know, and listen to them, listen to what they've got to say and they're just beautiful people. cater for our audience very well. Our demographic, I think, is the more mature age listener. And, um, and we play a lot of music from the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. And I think, and people know us for that, that's our reputation and we deliver it very well. We've got people like John who's on air right now who are incredibly knowledgeable about their music. They're passionate about it. They collect it as a hobby and they play it. It started with a, a group of sort of ham radio with a title that people, amateur radio people, uh, got together and some of those people were actually lecturers in, in TAFE at the Kingston College at Majors Road, O'Halloran Hill and they first started sort of doing some aspirant broadcasters, they'd get permission from the Australian Broadcasting Authority to do limited on-air work and they really started even from a caravan. They used to then from then do some shows at Radio Adelaide which is 5UV University Station and they used to do Saturday mornings broadcasting from there on their frequency and license. Having lecturers from the TAFE Institute, they made available a temporary classroom up there at Majors Road, O'Halloran Hill. Uh, I think I came on board about 1986. The Australian Broadcasting Authority used to give us a licence to broadcast something like four weeks a year. And in the early days, the idea was we'd also give a, a vehicle or a pathway for the students doing media studies in TAFE and we had a good association with the Kingston College of TAFE. Um, so we used to bring in classes and all that sort of thing and, and make them aware of the media, uh, particularly radio, uh, and all that sort of thing. So it was a good training ground. Then we had a situation come along where Sky Racing Channel Television came into Adelaide. It was part of the Australian network. They become wind that we had a station up at O'Halloran Hill and we were called Sky FM in those days. So Sky FM was, was rather too close to Sky Channel Racing. So we had some negotiations to change our name. So we did all that and we, you know, we got some dollars out of it, which was handy. Um, and we then changed our name to Coast FM what it currently is today. We started O'Halloran Hill, and if you hopped on a chair, you could see the coast, and Mark Constable, who's still with us and still presents a program on a Thursday between 12 and two called Beatbox, he came up with the idea of Coast FM, and it, and it was very appropriate. But in 98, we moved down to Glandor, and it suddenly less appropriate. But in the meantime, our name's now very well known and really we'd be crazy to, to tamper with, with, with the name, even though it is a bit confusing and some people who are new to Coast FM immediately assume we're based down at Victor Harbour. Uh, the particular studios that, that we are now in was actually a skilled training centre. We came down and we had to put in walls and things like this to make studios, soundproof the areas, and bring it up to scratch. The money we got from negotiation with Sky Channel, we bought the old Osterio SAFM Triple M consoles, um, Paul Kirks, and we put them in and we rewired them and did them all up. So we had some terrific people giving their time freely as volunteers um, to, to, to work all day on things, and, you know, in their own time. 
and it was a terrific spirit. And we've become a lot more sophisticated in the way we present our programs. I think we've become more professional, I don't mean commercial, but a lot more professional in the way that our standards, we, our standards are high and uh, we try to make them high so that our presenters are trying to achieve a goal. You know, our audience now is 196,000 people listen to us on a monthly basis. Yes, of course we've got people who are younger listening to us, but once it hits 49, it really escalates up. We, we have tried through the years to put on younger programs. Uh, we did used to have, believe it or not, you've heard of Fresh FM. Well, Fresh FM used to be with us. A lot of the young people were here, um, and they unfortunately had visions of wanting a dance music station 24 hours a day, which wasn't our licence. Uh, we needed to cover the full span, if we could, of, of a radio entertainment. Um, so consequently they left and they shared RTI uh, licence. They did night times, RTI, the Italian organisation. I'm Robin Carbons. I'm actually treasurer of the Vietnam Veterans Federation down at Marion. Um, we have a program on Coast FM called Vets on Air. Now it's veterans on air, not anything to do with vets, dogs and cats. So we cater for the military, ex-serving and current serving members uh, from anywhere in the world, any time. But our main concentration is on the Vietnam vets and now it's coming up also to some of the later vets, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc. We have the memorial at uh, half past six, which is the 1st Battalion Royal Australian Regiment uh, military band playing Waltzing Matilda Last Post and that becomes in as background music as we read out all those killed in Vietnam during that particular week of the program. And since there's been those killed in Afghanistan, so we're including all veterans of all conflicts that have been killed in action since Vietnam. And we do the weather for our overseas troops. Wherever our overseas troops are, Afghanistan, Iraq, Baghdad, uh, Middle East, uh, there's even some down on Heard Island, believe it or not. But uh, wherever they are, we read the weather out, and that's done at 7 o'clock every Tuesday night during the program. The program itself, if there's any others around, this would be the first one of its type in Australia. And uh, it consists of roughly 50% music and 50% information. Music from Vietnam era mainly, but it encompasses all the, some of the later music as well. The information we give out, we get from various places, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, Veterans SA, uh, other RSLs, uh, other ESOs that give us information that want to get the information out to veterans. But we do also have a lot of people listening that are not veterans. It goes out on the net, of course. We have a lot of people listening from various country centres all around Australia. We've had lots of comments from uh, veterans that are overseas and not so much while they're overseas, but when they come back, thank you for keeping us informed of what's going on in Australia, South Australia. My name's Lynn Kavner. I've been involved with Coast FM since uh, 2001. And uh, apart from doing the on-air programming, I've been involved on board of directors a couple of times and currently on the board as vice chairman. Quite enjoy Coast FM, it's been a long association, a good one. I did breakfast for over 10 years and got fed up with getting up at four o'clock in the morning so decided I wanted to have a change and so I do a program on Saturday morning from nine to midday which is very civilised and I called it Anything Goes and that's exactly what it is. It goes from the 50s right through until today's music, only a sprinkling of today's music, but all different genres as well. And I uh, like to feature some artists sometimes. I uh, might do a four in a row of um, an older artist, say Perry Como or something like that. Um, it's not a request show, but I get requests for songs. So I'll always do that in the following week for them. Um, but I like to play unusual stuff. Um, sure, there's an element of some of the older commercial tracks there, but I like artists like Katie Mellower. 
Uh, we'll put that into there and um, find some unusual things that people perhaps have never heard before or album tracks and play those as well. It's very rewarding. Uh, you know, the phones go crazy and people are phoning up to say hello and commenting about the music and that type of thing and they're just the things that you've got to deal with. Um, or they'll phone up and say, I haven't heard that song in years. You know, where on earth did you get that? Yeah, it's lovely being able to deliver. My name is Jelka Klinzic and my role here at Coast FM at the moment is I do Friday Drive, which is every Friday between 4 and 6 p.m. So it's like when people are knocking off work and driving home. They turn on the music, the radio, and they get some great music. My daughter, Nikki, who is 24 now, she was probably about 15 or 16 when she did work experience. And she got herself uh, about a week's work experience here at Coast FM. And then they said to her, look, why don't you do the course and you can actually have a show of your own? And we did get a show together. We had a Sunday night, well actually early Monday morning, midnight to three o'clock. And it was called Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. And we certainly had some fun. So uh, it was a great show. We did that for just over a year. After more than a year of doing Midnights to Three, it really plays with you, it's like, and I'm not a good sleeper as it is. And I sort of said to them, look, um, we, we're gonna give away our show uh, and I'm happy to do some fill-ins, you know? So when people are sick, we need a fill-in. Did that for a little while, about a year or so, and then the position came up for a, a drive show and it happened to be a Friday and I thought, hmm, that's a good show. I like a Friday, you know, leads into the weekend. So I auditioned for it and I was lucky enough to get it. So I've been doing that for about four years now and uh, loving it. We have a great association with Marion, with the Marion City Council. And uh, just one example of that is that we do a lot of outside broadcasts. And one of the ones that we do every year, well, for the last four years now, is we broadcast their um, uh, citizenship ceremony every year on the 26th of, of January, Australia Day. And so you've got all of these new Australians, you know, who are very excited and keen to join this wonderful country, and uh, we put all that to air. And Marion, they have a wonderful mayor, who's Chris Hanna. After they've been inducted and they've become Australian citizens, he actually interviews each one and we put all that to air. It's something that we're very proud of and we've won an award for it through SACBAR. So that's just one example and I think it's an excellent one. We are there for the community. We are. There are a lot of lonely people out there and you know, there's no skin off my nose to give them a nice word and um, a friendly smile because you can hear the smile in your voice, you know. And listen to them, listen to what they've got to say. And they're just beautiful people. They share things with us. And um, they'll ring and seriously, we are like a family to them. And in a funny way, they become family to us too. You know, like almost like extended family because, you know, we've got family, but you know, we really do start to care for these people a lot. And if, you, if they don't ring, you think, oh my God, I hope they're all right. I hope nothing's happened to them, you know? And there was a lady that she would ring me, not every Friday, but most Fridays. And she'd have a little chat and she'd request a song and I'd play the song. And then one day she rang and she said, oh, my husband's not very well. And I said, I'm so sorry to hear that. And she said, oh yeah, he's got cancer. And I said, oh, that's terrible. And so you're there for them, you have a little listen to them, you have a little cry with them, you know. And look, it didn't take long, it was like three weeks later, she rings and she said, oh, he passed away. It's so sad. And look, you think to yourself, well, what can I do? You can't do much, but you can be there to listen and give a kind word, you know. And then she rang me, she, well, it was, uh, literally only last week and she said oh it's been a year I said already time does go quickly you know she said will you play me a song and I said sure so I played her a song and then I saw another song and I thought oh do I play this or don't I because it would make her cry but you know what sometimes you need to cry and I thought it's a beautiful song so I dedicated it to her and her late husband and she rang me back she said oh thank you Shoka so much she goes that was so beautiful she goes it made me cry but you know what I needed to cry and I said I know so you know, I could tell you lots of little stories like that. A few times when we were doing that midnight shift, we had people, like a person would ring, this happened twice, and they were seriously thinking of taking their own life. 
And so you've got me and then a 15 year old daughter and it's like, wow, what do we do? And you just talk to them and you say, look, things are bad right now. It's happened to all of us, you know, everybody. We don't all have fabulous days. I said, but don't do anything silly. Go to sleep. Tomorrow when you wake up, I guarantee you things will be better. There's definitely something to live for. You know what I mean? Oh, but I've got nobody. Nobody loves me. I said, well, hey, I love you. I love it when you ring me. I love it when you talk to me. Don't do anything silly, you know? And I said, how would it make me feel if you actually did that? You know, please don't. And then they'd ring back and they say, oh, thanks, you got me through that, I'm, I'm okay. And I said, yep, good. <laughs> we get all sorts of things. And all that they ask is a couple of minutes of your time. That's all. And that's easy to give. Loneliness is such a big thing, it really is. Yeah, yeah. And it got to the point where uh, we had to put s signs up uh, for Lifeline, all of that, because there were, especially overnight, people threatening um, you know, for suicide and so the presenters were all a bit, you know, having to deal with that properly and so that, they got trained in and that, that is a very sad thing and then you get people that phone you all the time and you're so used to them phoning and then suddenly there's no calls. Phil, who's on air here uh, now, he and I used to have this one particular uh, young lad phone us who was vision impaired and Phil would go and pick him up and bring him to the open days and things like that. And all of a sudden, he just stopped ringing. And I had to contact Phil and I said, look, have you heard from Sean? It's not like him. He said, no, I haven't. So he actually went out to his house to make sure he was all right. And it turns out his parents were just fed up with the telephone bills. <laughs> you know, you're just so used to them calling that when it stops, you worry about them and worry where they are. Yeah. Mm. I'm a Vietnam veteran myself. I don't remember a lot about Vietnam except that it was scary and the few things that went on over there and uh, tried to forget it for many years and then was convinced by a psychiatrist that I should start talking about it. So I started talking about it and things seemed to get a little bit better and I seem to be doing more rather than stuck away at home and just doing things by myself and not doing much anything else so, and things have turned out quite good and I've now come onto the radio. We do have interviews. We had one a uh, couple of weeks ago is Beverly and she's the organiser of Walk Beside which is the Marion Suicide Prevention. We talk quite a lot about suicide because there are a lot of veterans that do suicide and there's too many of them, averaging one a week, which is miles too many. So we want to get the information out there that there is help available. There are only two radio stations in, in Adelaide that go 24 hours a day live. 5AA is one, of course they're a commercial station, and the other one is us, Coast FM, which we're very proud of. We made the decision to broadcast 24 hours a day. The biggest reason was we had so many presenters. We had an enormous number of presenters, and that fluctuates, of course, but when we made the decision, it was to try and give everyone a gig and make sure, you know, rather than people sitting in the wings saying, gosh, I did the course nearly 12 months ago and I still haven't got a program. So it, it, we did that. And also the other, it's a great training ground. You know, it means then that you're doing the training after midnight and not nine to five, Monday to Friday, when you want your better qualified presenters to be on air because you're trying to uh, appeal to as big an audience as possible. It's difficult at times, as you can imagine, getting volunteers to come in at three o'clock in the morning, but nevertheless we do it seven days a week, 24 hours a day, been doing it steadily since 1998. Uh, it's an amazing accomplishment and they're all volunteers. Currently we've got a membership base I think of around about 450 at the moment. Now that fluctuates of course. We have a, a training course here meets the obligations and responsibilities uh, that the ABA expects of us. We have um, over 120 volunteers 
Um, on air there's most probably about 100. Some of those programs, such as the sporting program, have a, a roster of 10 or 12 people. It, my program's just one person. But um, so there's a, a, lot of, a lot of presenters and they're all volunteers, no one's paid. We only have one paid person and that's Deborah in the office who does a splendid job, but the rest of us are all volunteers. So that's very important, both financially and, and just the viability of the station. I think it's very good. Always finances, uh, because we're self-funded. Uh, there's very limited government grants out there. And uh, in fact, Coast FM doesn't get any government grants at all. Uh, we get occasional um, council grants. So that's why fundraising, sponsorship, is very, very important and also asking the general public to become members of the station. It helps to keep us going on a daily basis. The other challenges, of course, from within are the personalities, making sure that everybody is getting along, sort of balancing act of all of that as well. I am very much of the belief that our listeners, because they enjoy our sound and our station so much, uh, that we have constant events so that they can come along to it, whether it be uh, like a little cabaret night or something like that. Um, we've just recently had two of them. And so they come along and enjoy a night out, very inexpensive, but it helps us financially uh, to raise money for the station. Our open day is something uh, that is very special. Uh, it's probably the one day of the year that uh, I'd say 80% of our 100 volunteers are at and uh, the community, there's probably about 3,000 pass through on the day and we have lots of different community groups and organisations involved in it and it's really lovely meeting and putting a face uh, to those people you may have spoken to on the phone all year or those that have been um, subscribers and members of the station for a long time just catching up with uh, some of them. There's one particular couple that they insist that a, a few of us have scones and jam and cream with them every open day. It's a tradition now. It's all about raising money to keep going uh, because we're all volunteers here and we've still got to keep updating equipment and we've got an issue of uh, a transmitting site at the moment where we have to, um, we've got it in a temporary location and we've got to find a permanent location for our transmitter, which could cost us a lot of money to do. I mean, I hope the, f the, the station can still exist. Uh, as all community uh, television or radio stations, we have to keep applying to renew our licenses. We've got to meet the demands and the benchmarks that are required. We've been pretty lucky so far, so I, I certainly hope that we can continue that, that it's a worthwhile organisation contributing to the community in enough benefit to continue our licence all the time. So we're growing, we're growing all the time. Um, as everything else in this world does, of course. And uh, so I think as long as we can continue to grow and provide a community service, uh, then I'm happy. Community radio is very important. It's just like community television. It's offering an alternative. It must be never seen as uh, competing with commercial radio or the ABC. It's purely offering an alternative and it's actually offering access to, to organisations. And we have a program in here on a Monday between uh, six and eight in the evening, which is an excellent example of offering organisations such as Rotary and Lions and the others that I've mentioned um, to, to have, have a voice on radio and to uh, push their particular barrow. So access radio, it, it, another very important part. Community radio is a provision to get the voice out into the community on any issues that are considered appropriate and necessary. Because we cater for the community. We're not out there to impress anybody, make good ratings. We like to have ratings, but that's not the point. Um, we're just out there to be in the community, get the get information to the community and before the community. If the community want to come in here and sit at the chair with us when we do it, they're quite welcome to. The commercial radio stations, they're very protective of their own little patch and each pre presenter is protective of their own little patch. Uh, that's not the same with community radio stations, we're just one big family here. We give them the music that they grew up on, to coin a phrase, the soundtrack of their life, you know? And I think that's what they appreciate about it. 
and won't be tired if you play something that does not fit into that, they will let you know. Uh, I remember many, many years ago, I put a Kylie Minogue song on and uh, a woman phoned up and said, if you're going to start playing this rubbish, I'm not listening. So you, ha you have comments like that because they feel such an ownership of the radio station. It's their station and uh, we're very pleased to be here and to, to give them what they like to hear. If the listener rings me and she says, oh, it's our 60th wedding anniversary, well, I'm going to announce it on the air and make a big do about it and play their favourite song. It's OK, you can do that on community radio. And on community radio, when your phone rings, we pick it up. I don't know that that would happen so much in the commercial stations. One, because they don't have the time. And again, if it was somebody that rang all the time, they probably wouldn't pick it up on purpose. Do you know what I mean? But it's OK here. We're there for the community. And that's the sort of thing that is really lovely. You know, it's, it's knowing that you're giving them an alternative in programming because that's what community radio is all about. And I believe in that very, very much, uh, the philosophies of community broadcasting, um, that it gives individuals like myself the opportunity to come forward and have a go and at the same time you can learn all different aspects of uh, radio and also minority groups can come forward, put their voice to air and be heard and we're there to complement our commercial counterparts and our public radio counterparts and I think Coast FM does that very well.